Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Then check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something to inspire you. That's dealtoheelteas.com. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to dealtoheelteas.com. Again, that's dealtoheelteas.com. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you enjoy the Girl Dad Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And I believe the relationship between a daughter and her father is one of the most important relationships a young lady can have. And therefore, my mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by sharing the voices of girl dads to the world. So check out our podcast on every platform where podcasts can be listened to. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel. Again, that's the Girl Dad Discussions podcast with your host, Ernest James. Welcome to Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, uh, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you haven't already, Make sure to listen, like, subscribe, and share to our podcast on all of your social media listening platforms. Also, make sure you guys check us out on our new YouTube channel, which is the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network channel. Um, That where there you can find uh, the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, as well as the Girl Dad Discussions podcast that is there and some other podcasts that is also coming your way. Uh, we started turning into a podcasting network because I wanted to bring you guys more uh, opportunity and more um, content uh, besides mine. Right. And so we have, make sure you guys follow us on the deal to heal podcasting uh, network. And again, you also be able to find the girl dad discussions podcast there uh, well, on that podcast, I talk to other girl dads like myself about the fatherhood journey and the relationship of the daddy daughter relationship. And so make sure you guys go and check that out as well as the deal to heal with EJ's podcast is also there. Uh, so yeah, again, make sure you guys checking us out on our um, YouTube channel, the deal to heal podcasting network. As you guys know, we are a self sustained podcast. And one of the ways that we stay on the air is by bringing you amazing products for you to purchase in order for us to pay our bills. So our product of the week is our purpose journal as well as our purpose planner. Um, So I believe that we should journal, journal in order to keep track of where we've been and where we are in our lives as well as plan for our future so you guys can get your copy of the purpose journal and the purpose planner um, from Amazon. The links is in the descriptions below. Um, Make sure you guys go and check that out, right? So today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest, Ms. Darla. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I am good. I am good. First of all, let me say thank you for being here Uh, because you could have been doing anything else with anyone else, but you're here with me and my listeners and we definitely appreciate it. And I want you to know that. And so we're going to jump right into it. Do me a favor. 
introduce yourself uh, to my listeners and tell us who you are and a little bit about what you do. Yes, thank you, by the way, for allowing me to be here today. So it's it's wonderful. Um, my name is Darla Radilla, and I am a certified trauma informed somatic coach. And um, I, uh, what that means is that I help people who have either experienced trauma or narcissistic abuse. Um, I specialize with women, but I also do one on one sessions with men. Have a free support group for women as well. Um, podcaster, brand new podcast I just released a couple weeks ago. Um, but the somatic part of it is, is that I um, am being trained on how to be aware of sensations in my body and teaching others to do that as well. And often when we are going through something, uh, a, a traumatic experience or just something that's bothering us, those physical sensations usually connect to something in our past often in childhood. And so what I do is help people. I kind of walk through that with a series of questions and we help find the answers within themselves of how we can maybe have to sit in that painful experience for a couple of minutes, but also bring it to the forward and connect it to what's going on presently so they can work through that and then move forward and do better. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I, I'm familiar a little bit uh, with the, uh, I don't even want to say it wrong, somatic movement yes. right I'm, I'm i'm aware a little bit of it because um <clears throat> there is a young lady who's a part of um an organization that i work with called the forgiveness mission which we'll definitely talk about uh, a little later um but that's one of the things that she brought to our workshops that we have was kind of leading our, our our people through some somatic movements to help you know even you know within the body right um, but I don't personally know too much about it, you know. <laughs> so we definitely can dive a little bit more um, into uh, into that and, and what that is, and even the benefits that it offers, right? Um, but before that, let's let's go back a little bit uh, in your story. You mentioned about you know uh, being involved in, I guess, a, a narcissistic. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, yes. I might not say it right no more, so I'm glad I did it the first time. <laughs> you got it, narcissist. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's okay. Right. So let's go, say, Mark. <laughs> right. So let's go. Let's go back in your story a little bit, and even and talk about that experience because I, I I think especially now in different conversations, especially with the podcast uh, arena and things of that nature. And it, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's kind of become a, I don't want to say cliche, you know, but, you know, I have a problem with people that jump on on a bandwagon of things, right? And and it's just not this. It's just with everything in my life. Like, I, that really bothers me. So, but it seems like it was just like this time period where everybody was like, Oh, we learned a new word. You know what I'm saying? And so did everybody just jumped on and like, oh yeah, you in this kind of relationship, and this happened to me, and this, and just start throwing the labels around. Um, so I'm ranting, but <laughs> let's go back to you and and your story because you actually were in a uh, a relationship that this was present in. So let's talk a little bit about that and even how you know, you begin to find your way out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, you're right that just because someone's a jerk or they gaslight or they're mean to you, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a narcissist. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an overused word for sure. Um, but they are out there. And so my experience was that um, 20 years ago, I met a very charming, handsome man. And this is often what they are. Um, I've, I've been in three different relationships with narcissists, and all of them have been good looking, um, some of them charming, covert, which that word means is they're not, I always, before I met my first, I always envisioned them being like a sleazy car salesman that overt type that's so obvious, like slime and mean. But exact opposite it seems is what i attract and these are the people that cover their their crazy really well and so you have this handsome man he's paying a lot of attention to me um i feel quote unquote special because i'm picked um and then he goes through a very common tactic called love bombing where my what i realized at the time and didn't know um realized later but didn't know at the time let's put it that way is that I was unhappy in the marriage I was currently in. 
And he picked up on that. And so he kind of moved in under the guise of being friends. How nice of him to move in and take his friend's wife. But he um, he started to fill those gaps that I was feeling in my current relationship, paying a lot of attention to me, um, making me feel special, um, giving me gifts, just totally showering me with everything I've always wanted. Like, oh, my God, here's the white horse and the white knight, you know, and everything I've ever wanted. Perfect. And um, then over time, what happens is, is they will start this devalue stage where they don't pay as much of attention to you. They've gotten you hooked, basically. Um, I've said this before. It's like an addiction. Once they hook you, they get you to fall in love with them. You're totally taken. You know, you're, all your defenses are down. They'll start the devalue. They won't pay as much attention to you. They'll kind of withdraw mentally or physically. And then they'll go to the discard. This is, if they don't end the relationship, this is where, uh, with me, it was a cycle that went over and over again, where he would either give me the silent treatment, or he would, quote unquote, punish me for things if I didn't follow his rules, or he would put me down, insult me, start crazy fights about stupid stuff, or make up things that never happened and say that I was crazy. I mean, all these just, all these ways to really get me to question my reality. And a what happens is, is this cycle is they get faster and faster and faster. You get to that discard phase faster, discard phase faster, and you never ever get back to the persona that they originally gave you, which was that love bombing pretend mm -hmm. person. But you're so hooked and you're so in love that you can't see the forest for the trees, and you want that person back. And they get they convince you it's your fault you made me change or you have, you have changed or you're not doing this or that. And it's a, with my experiences, it was a very gradual kind of effect. So I didn't even notice that I was being abused. I didn't notice that my personality was changing. I was losing my power um, and very unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it sounds, <laughs> It sounds and it, it, I like something you said. You said they they covered their crazy well. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I really like that because I think that's um, I, I think that's that's in a lot of relationships. Probably not just the um, narcissistic ones, right? Yes. You know, you, it's a lot of people that that hide their crazy very well, you yeah. know. And but you get into re these relationships with them, and then like you said, they begin to. To change, to change right, and change, change into almost this other person that you don't even recognize, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, then you're left to figure out, like, okay, is this true? And, and, and even going back to something else you said, um, because I remember having a conversation with with someone and explaining to me just just that it's like they meet you as this one person that you fall in love with. And even after their change, they change, you are still fighting, trying to, I guess, reconnect or even trying to get them to go back to that person, you know, because even like, yeah, I know they're treating me wrong right now, but they, that other person that I fall, fell in love with is still in there somewhere, right? you know, and so you're almost kind of like fooling yourself or just believing, like, if I could just do the right things you know, to bring that person back almost, you know? So was that even some of, you know, some of the things that maybe you even felt at that time, just like, I know that person is in there, you know, so I'll hang on a little bit longer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're, you're not dealing with reality. You're dealing with the potential or what your past experience was. And, and it's very, um, it's very disarming because no matter what you do, that original person never shows up. And then, of course, it's very easy for them once again to turn it on you. Well, you're too needy. You're too demanding. Um, mm. You you shouldn't have done that. You talked about our relationship outside of the house, and I told you not to do that. It, almost like scolding you like a child. But yeah. yeah. I, I felt like that so many times and in all of those relationships. Yeah. And, and it even goes back to just the, when we're talking about um, abuse and really recognizing the different types of abuse it is. I mean, or there, there is, right? Because we oftentimes think about physical abuse, but then there's verbal abuse, there's mental abuse. You know, uh, there's even um, 
financial abuse, right? You know, where they get you to a position where even financially you're depending on them, you know, you know, for everything. And then they use that as a sense of control to get you to do whatever it is that, you know, they want you to do, you know, and, and then I, I had a friend once, you know, and she, she told me she had started having issues in, in her marriage, you know, so we're having a conversation and she's like, he keeps on, uh, he keeps, um, accusing her of cheating, you know, he's like, Oh, I know you cheated on me or whatever. And she's like, I didn't, you know, and like you said, trying to make you like question yourself and, you know, long story short, what I came to find out he was cheating and I mm -hmm. think he wanted a way out anyway. And so he just started, you know, uh, accusing her of cheating, you know, and then she's second guessing herself and second guessing her actions. Like, okay, what did I do to even make him feel that way when all the time, he was just trying to cover his tracks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's projection. They That is a very common thing that they do. They will project their own behavior onto you. Um, while I was never accused of cheating, I know now looking back that he definitely was. I could just see it. I mean, he would openly flirt with women right in front of me, um, totally not even talk to me. And and, and it was a way of, they, they call it triangulation, where mm -hmm. they will play either me and the ex-wife or me and the daughter or me and another woman. And so what that also does is that that furthers that addiction, the trauma bond, it adds to that cycle. Because then you're like, now you're competing with this other person for their attention. And they just sit back and watch the two of you go at it. And they're like, ha, look what I did. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's definitely different. So let's let's talk about, you know, your your healing journey. Because even yeah. as you, you know, once you begin to see yourself, you know, it's like, okay, this is not working out for me, you know. And then especially once you begin to recognize the traits and the signs, like, okay, something's not going, you know, something's definitely not right with this picture, you know, then you start, look, <clears throat> excuse me, start looking for your way out and, you know, begin that journey of your own healing. So what was that process like for you, you know, and how was that journey to begin able to heal yourself um, from not just that relationship, but probably even how it affected the other relationships that you were involved with, because it doesn't just stay, you know, in the house, like, right? because it affects you personally. So if you change, then everything you touch changes too. Absolutely. And it seems like I go through cycles. I'm going through another one right now uh, where I'm kind of pruning the tree per se, mm -hmm. uh, but to go back to um, the original relationship, it was a long process. It took me a year to even realize, a year after I left, to even realize that I was had been in an abusive relationship. I suffered from Stockholm Syndrome. And if you're familiar with that, it's when an abuser can get the person that's been abused to actually um, feel sorry for them, uh, stick up for them. I was still seeing him about once a month. We go out to dinner. I was still calling him and texting him regularly. I, I could not break that addiction, that trauma bond. And it, it wasn't until I had a, a counselor say to me, hey, this is an abusive relationship. This is not normal. And I was in such denial. I, I thought she was crazy. Like, no, you don't mm -hmm. understand. And, and um, through a series of, of that and friends and just really spiritually digging in, um, spending a lot of time at my spiritual center, both in classes, services, and volunteering, just really getting right with myself. Um, it's a long process. It's been 11 years. And um, the pivotal moment for me is when I really came close to taking my own life. Mm -hmm. I was so beside myself because I was destroyed. Um, even though he asked for the divorce and I, I ultimately walked and left, I was devastated and I, I didn't know how to go on. I was miserable. I didn't want to live without him, but I knew I had to, but I didn't know how to make that happen. And so I just cried out to my higher power that day. And I realized if I took my life, all those messages that he was telling people about how I was crazy, I just gave him all the ammunition he needed to say, see, I told you so. She's so crazy. She took her own life. What a, what a miserable, I won't say, you know, you know what, um, but and that was that would stop me. And so then when we cry out to our higher power, it's amazing how things will come into our life. 
four or five really strong women came into my life and um, held me up, that counselor, my spiritual center. And so it was this, this process, um, which has been an ongoing journey, always will be. While I am doing wonderfully better, I will always, there's a, it will always be a part of who I am. But what I'm working towards is healing those parts as they come up. Um, I have, I still have a, a lot of anxiety and triggers that come up frequently, particularly in a relationship with other person, abusive or not. And so the goal is to have less triggers every day. That's kind of the, the goal. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love something that you said, you know, that you are surrounded by a group of women that, you know, supported you. And I think that is so important in all of our journeys of, of healing you know, that we don't try to do it alone, right? And and you're looking about getting to the, the point where you wanted to take your own life. And I'm very open about my own uh, bout with suicide ideation, you know, because it was even after a divorce too. It was some other things, but it definitely was a divorce also that after I came out um, that I found myself in this, in this dark place, you know, and was really contemplating even taking my own life. Um, but like you, I was connected with some people who, who stayed with me and, and kind of helped me pull me out of that place. And then I joined a um, bereavement support group, you know, uh, because of some other losses that I was going through at that time, too. And that was how I, I kind of got my strength to, to come out of that place. Right. Was the, the people that that gathered around me and, and supported me. And so I definitely want the listeners to know, you know, that is, is something that is so important to us, our communities and the communities that we build and the communities that we join. You know, the, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, right? So there's nothing that you're going through that somebody else isn't currently going through of our, or our, have already been through. You know, it's just a matter of finding those people finding that support group, finding that one person or a group of people who understand what you're dealing with and able to encourage you and uplift you as you work your way through that, you know, through that process. And so I'm, I'm very happy that you had those women around you. And uh, even in your, in your own words, how important do you feel, you know, that was and your healing, you know, to even help you get out of that space? I wouldn't be here. I mean, to be quite frank, if I didn't have that spiritual center and that that somewhere to go where people would check on me and hold me up and let me cry. And those women who said, don't call him, call me. I wouldn't be here. I would not be on this earth. And absolutely, you're so right. And I still to this day find that. And, and I'll say even in the support group that I run, because I am still facing a lot of the same challenges that they are. I get just as much out of it as they do, because especially with narcissistic abuse, it's often misunderstood that people don't understand we've been brainwashed and we have to deprogram like a cult. And even some licensed therapists, unfortunately, um, I've had some issues with some not some, some have, but I have found that being with other people that get it like, Oh yeah, I went through that too. Even if they don't have the answers, just having a, a, a knowing that they understand is, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think that that just having that space where you can be vulnerable also, you yeah. know, and even as you mentioned, like with you even being in the, in a, the space where, you know, you're even holding the event, but still able to say, hey, I'm not all the way there too. you know, like I'm still on a journey, too. I think that is so important, you know. So one of the things that I, I did um, when I went through this process myself, um, going to the, the bereavement um joining the bereavement group, right? I I loved it so much and it, and it impacted me so much that I stayed and became a volunteer, you know? And then even after I left, I think I stayed there for a year. And after I left, I started a nonprofit doing, holding bereavement sessions, you know? And it really is that space that, you know, you really can be vulnerable. I'm like, look, I'm I'm dealing with this, you know, and, and and I talk about the grief wheel. I'm like, it's called a wheel for a reason because it never stops rolling. You know, right. what I mean? there's not no end to it. It's like a circle. There's no end. There's no beginning. There's no end. It just keeps on going, you know. And sometimes it rolls a little smoother, and then sometimes it hits some hits some rocks along the way. You know, yeah. you have to deal with it. But I I think that community 
you know, just having that like-minded community and community and people of like uh, experiences, you know, just opens up so many doors for us to be able to be vulnerable, to be able to speak in our truth and even learn and heal from, you know, whatever we're dealing with, with one another, you know? And I think again, just knowing that you're not alone makes such a, a difference in your own healing. You know, just like, okay, I'm not the only one who fell for the tricks. I'm not the only one who, you know, found, you know, lost my way and, and is it coming back or, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm not the only one. And sometimes when we go through things, a lot of times we feel like we are the only one, which makes yeah. it so much harder for us to get through it. So definitely, you know, to all my listeners, whatever you're going through, you know, there are so many resources now with the internet and Facebook and Instagram, like you could just type in support group for whatever, you know, there's a dog walkers support group, I'm sure, you know what I mean? Like whatever issue that you're dealing with, it should be, you could easily find, you know, your crew, you know, easily find your support group. Just make sure that you reach out because you're not alone and you don't have to do it alone. Right. So, yes. I, I want to jump a little bit uh, into, but we talked, talked about it a little bit, the, uh, somatic uh, movement and the somatics of uh, that you're learning now, how much of that played a part into where you are now, you know, and how can that, you know, help others that may be going through similar experiences or whatever trauma that they're, they're going through? Because I know you don't just deal with that trauma, but other traumas. Um, mm -hmm. So how does that, how does it kind of work? If I could say it, put it that way. And then how can it be a, a help you know, with whatever trauma that we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so the nervous somatics is basically the body. And so our mm -hmm. nervous system stores trauma. Uh, a book I highly recommend, which is in very easy to understand terms is the body keeps the score. I think it's, is it, I always forget the guy's name, Vessel von der Kolk or something like that. But if you do the body mm -hmm. keeps the score, it's on audible as well as Amazon. Excellent book. And it was kind of my first exposure to somatics. I'd never heard about it before. Um, I had started to get a degree in psychology back when I lived in Washington state. So I'm kind of a psych geek and love people watching. And so it kind of struck my interest. Um, it was kind of a process actually and how I got into it. I started blogging about a year and a half ago, just about my personal experience. This is why I still do. Um, and that is a really vulnerable, this is what's going on in my life today, good or bad kind of thing. Um, and I decided to turn that into a business. Um, first came the course in February. I started this course six months ago. And it's about learning about the nervous system, how we store it. So how it kind of works, we've made it really easy to understand. We call it the traffic lights of tolerance. And so you have your green light. This is when you're grounded, when you're feeling good, you're on that walking trail, that hiking trail, the sun is shining, it's a real nice cool breeze, and you're totally safe, and you can smell the, the evergreens, and you're so relaxed. And then you notice, hey, there's a mountain lion, and he's up on top of that rock, and I'm not feeling very good right now, and I'm, my heart is racing, and I'm preparing for danger, and that's what we call the yellow light, or sympathetic response, fight or flight. This is when your body is responding to or preparing for danger. And when there is a danger, it's very helpful. It goes way back to hunters and gatherers and all that. But what ends up happening in an abusive relationship is we get hyper vigilant and hyper alert. And so we're always, and I, I catch myself in this sometimes still, um, where I'm very vigilant, like, you know, like you're almost, um, instead of looking for danger, you're expecting it at any moment all the time. Mm -hmm. And then there's that third stage, what we call the red light. This is shutdown. This is when you see a lot of depression, procrastination, people just not doing anything. You know, those people that just come home and watch TV all the time, or they, you know, they don't do anything to better their lives. They feel stuck. Like, and there's, and they're in that rut. Um, and um, that's, that's a tough position because, you know, if you're in sympathetic or the, the yellow light, it's easier to say, you know, I'm going to take a walk. Um, if you're in that red light, sometimes that's, that's too much. If you're shut down enough and you're depressed enough, just getting out of bed can be a challenge. And I have been there. So I do understand that, that portion. Um, so how it works into the sessions that I do 
is that when a client comes to me and they say, I want to work on this issue, um, I'll use an example because I just did this to myself this morning. Um, I was on a camping trip and there was this guy. I went, I like going to the national forest and I turned my phone off. I go every month for four days because I talk about trauma a lot and I need to get reset. Mm -hmm. And yep. I've been going through some stuff these past couple weeks and needed to process. The guy had, um, he had a generator and he did come over super nice. Hey, I'm going to be. I'm going to be charging my fifth wheel three or four hours a day. I was already like, okay, fine. He was nice about it, but it ended up being way more. And so by last night, I'm getting mad. <laughs> so this morning before I left the campsite, I went down to the lake with my dog and I'm like, okay, I am very mad at this guy because I feel like he misrepresented himself. And if he really wants electricity that bad, why doesn't he go where there's electric hookups? Mm -hmm. Why am I just like, like, like rageful angry at this guy why and i'm starting to feel those sensations i was having bad dreams i was feeling off all day yesterday i just felt this tension underneath my tightness in my chest and i had to sit and say what is going on here and this has happened several times lately and i have realized yeah i'm mad at this guy but the rage is not coming from him it's coming from my anger at my father, how men over my lifetime have let me down. And he just happens to be a man. And the urge to go over to his campsite and scream and yell and take it out on him was overpowering, which is why I went to the lake. Like, this is this is old darling. We're not going to do this anymore. But I had to get in touch with that and sit at the lake for an hour. And my dog's the best listener ever. I highly recommend pets. And I literally just talked out loud to myself with the dog beside me and worked through that. And I felt all of those sensations in my body dissipate when I pinpointed it, that I had some really frustrating experiences on the dating world that I was still pretty angry about. And then that it, it just went all the way back to dad. Mm -hmm. This poor guy is about to be on the receiving end of something he really never did. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that I could calm myself down. So if I got back and he happened to wave that I wasn't going to lunge and just blow it off. Like you're leaving now, just let it go. And so there are similar things that, you know, maybe we are, we, um, what do I find the hardest is folks that have parents that are narcissists. I did not have that experience, only relationships, mm -hmm. but it's so hard for them because they, as a child depended on them for their, for their very well being, And so Physically and psychologically, a small child cannot believe their parent is bad per se or does bad things. And so as an adult, they'll say, I don't understand as an adult why I feel so traumatized, why I can't say no, why I am having this, in, this anxiety attack. And then I'll say, because that's what you were trained to do as a small child. So we need to go back to that little girl and say, you didn't have a voice then, but you have one now. What would you say? if you could have said it back then. Yeah, yeah. That that is so good. That is so good. I um <laughs> two things that you you mentioned that I really connect with. Number one, I am a people watcher. I love watching people, right? I usually wear shades all the time because I just like to watch people. People are so interesting, especially uh -huh. when they know don't, don't know that you're watching. So <laughs> so I love that. And then you talked about you know, getting out and going out in nature. And I really love that too. And I think that I used to walk on a treadmill, right? And run. I used to jog on my treadmill in, in, in my house. And one day I was just like, all right, I'm going to go to the park because there's a, a park um, near me. And I just went and you know, I walked around in the, the nature part of the park. And it changed like my whole experience of, of walking, you know, because I'm, I'm a walker. I love walking. And so even now I, I just joined a, a hikers group. You know, and so that I can, you know, start actually going to like the natural parks and things like that and, and hiking. Um, but I think there's being out in nature and reconnecting with nature, especially when we're going through something. You know, I think as great as our cities are, and I live in Chicago, so great as the skyscrapers are and all of that, I think it takes away from our energy and our, our connection you know, with the world itself, you know what I'm saying? So I think when we actually get back out in nature and just like the nature without all the extra stuff, you know what I'm saying? Without the generators, you know? Right. <laughs> we're, actually, 
you know, <laughs> able to go down by the lake and, and, you know, maybe skip some rocks or something. I think those experiences help us to reconnect with the energy of the earth itself, you know, and even our emotional energy and the things that we go through. I think just think it helps us even to begin to even process even our minds even more and process what we're, what we're dealing with, you know, in nature, I, you know, I, I I just think it's, it adds so much uh, value just to be able to take a walk, you know, and and reconnect. You know, I haven't tried grounding yet. Uh, that's when you like take off your shoes and walk in the bare grass or hug trees. Like I haven't tried that part yet, um, but I'm I'm sure that I will at some point. And I, I but I really do believe that there is just a a space that we get to that. It's almost like a we mentioned you mentioned earlier a resetting. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like okay, let's let's reset, reset everything, my mind, my emotions, everything, and just kind of release. And I think we we can get that from nature. You know, definitely if you need a, a therapist and all of that, definitely do that too. You know? <laughs> and then if you go to church, because that's one of my things too, it's not either or. Like it's, it's God and therapy; they go hand to hand. Actually, right. that's that's a perfect trio. God, therapy, and nature. There you I go. I make a shirt with that. It sounds like I think, <laughs> I think it would be like the perfect trio. All three of those will help us to recenter who we are and be able to deal with whatever it is that we're dealing with. I love that. I, I just thought of that. <laughs> yeah. So, Darla, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you so much uh, for being on. Thank you so much for being on and, to, and for sharing your story uh, and your expertise. Um, I want you to leave us with a word of advice, um, uh, advice, inspiration, however you feel, you know, motivation, you know, whatever that's on your heart. Um, I want you to have the last word and and leave us with a word of advice. Um, Also share your social media handles and and things of that nature. Um, But while you uh, think about that, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. While you think about that, to my listeners, uh, thank you guys for you know tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you guys have ever thought about starting your own podcast, make sure you get your uh, copy of the ebook "Start Your Podcast Now." Uh, you can get it from ebooks by ejames.com. Uh, I was constantly being asked on how to you know start a podcast. And so I just wrote the ebook and I know it's effective because not only did I write it, but I turned it into a course that I now teach at high school and elementary schools for students to teach them how to start their own podcast. So you can get your copy of the Start Your Podcast Now ebook at ebooks by ejames.com. Make sure you guys go there and get your copy. The link will definitely be in the description below. Um, uh, so make sure you guys check that out. Also, make sure you check out uh, my main web web page website, which is dealhealfulfill.org. Again, that's dealhealfulfill.org because my mission, as well as the podcast, is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. So make sure you guys go there and check that out. You'll also be able to find the link there to book me to come out to be a speaker at your next event or even to host and facilitate a uh, workshop for you and your students if you're at a school or your organization if you're at a, uh, a corporation. So make sure you guys go check that out. Um, also, ebooks by ejames.com. Where all of my ebooks are, you can find the male men's ebook. Um, you can find the core four which is the core four values that every daughter should get from her father. Um, that is the ebook also that we use with um, the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. We actually have a set uh, segment of the Girl Dad Discussions podcast where we discuss the core four ebook. Um, there's also another ebook called um, Forgiving Me, the Four Steps to Self Forgiveness. Again, all of those ebooks can be found at ebooks by ejames.com. Again, that's ebooks by ejames.com. Uh, and also make sure you guys check out our inspirational t-shirt line that also has our uh, podcast merch. It's our t-shirts with our podcast logos on it from uh, the Deal to Heal podcast as well as the Girl Dead Discussions podcast. But also go check out our inspirational 
uh, tease our inspirational quotes. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That is our tagline. So make sure you guys go check out our t-shirts so you can be inspired all day, right? And last but not least, I talked a little bit about it earlier. The last couple of years, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And what we do, we have free virtual web, web free virtual workshops every other month. We used to do them every quarter, but now we do them every other month. So whenever you listen to this, either one just ended or there's one coming up. And what we do, we talk about everything, forgiveness, forgiveness of uh, self, forgiveness of others, what it means to forgive, who forgiveness is for. And even there is a part that we talk about forgiveness and how it affects your body, in which a friend of mine uh, leads us to some somatic movement uh, exercises to help us even deal with the uh, unforgiveness and the forgiveness that we hold in our bodies. Um, but then is workshop is absolutely free. So you guys can go to forgivenessmission.com. Again, that's forgivenessmission.com to sign up for the next workshop. Or you can go to Eventbrite and look up Forgiveness Workshop held by the Forgiveness Mission in order to register for that absolutely free yet super impactful uh, workshop that we do every other month. Uh, so again, if you're listening to this, whenever you're listening to this, there's one coming up or there's one just ended, but go to forgivenessmission.com in order to sign up for the next forgiveness workshop. Ms. Dollar, once again, I want to say thank you so very much for being on and for sharing your story. I want you to have the last word. So the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. And thank you again for letting me be here. Um, you know, my last words would be, um, this is kind of my mantra as well as I'm re-navigating relationships, is instead of focusing on how you feel about a person, whether that's romantic family or a, a boss or something, um, really focus on how you feel in their presence. How do they make you feel? Do you feel physically and mentally safe? Or are you feeling anxious? And, and if you are, just to really look at that, that is often an indicator that it might be a relationship that either needs repair or needs to be discarded. All right. All right. Do you want to leave us with your uh, social media handles? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a website and that is highvaluewoman.info. And on there, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I also have the link to my podcast. I'm also on Apple and Spotify as well as, oh, what is it? Amazon uh, Music, I think. Um, I'm on, and all those links are there. Um, and if you're willing, I'm, I'd love to extend a 20% discount one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, there is a landing page. There's going to be a link that, and it's um, highvaluewoman.info slash deal to number two, heal, deal to heal. All right. All right. We can't end it no better than that. Uh, to my listeners, thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with EJ's podcast, where our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to hear from the pain and to fulfill your purpose. So until next time, you guys be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to Deal to Heal Teas dot my shopify dot com remember our mission is to help you to deal heal and fulfill deal with your problem heal from the pain and fulfill your purpose thanks for listening